I'm gonna make a prediction now that may take up to five to seven years to begin to manifest, but I feel like it's so important that we start talking about this now, because if we don't, we could be looking at the end of Home Labs as we know it. Stick with me here, let's dig in. The genesis of this comes from an article posted on Tom's Hardware on the 23rd of November, written by Anton Shilov, reporting on Intel's official introduction to their new pay-as-you-go chip licensing program called Intel On Demand. Pay as you what? Intel's plan for the next generation of Xeon CPUs, known as Sapphire Rapids, is to introduce a pay-as-you-go licensing model where you pay to unlock features of your CPU that are already on die, just software disabled until you pay to enable them. As of now, pay-as-you-go enablement is limited to special purpose accelerators and security technologies that customers may not need on every CPU. The list of technologies that Intel wants to make available on demand includes software guard extensions, dynamic load balancer, Intel data streaming accelerator, Intel in-memory analytics accelerator, and Intel quick assist technology. By the way, that last one on the list, Quick Assist Technology or QAT, that's an accelerator that helps you improve encryption and decryption for VPN connections. So if you're running any sort of VPN like IPSEC or OpenVPN at home, you'd likely benefit from using it. The two licensing models Intel will be enabling are an activation model, meaning you pay once and it's unlocked forever, and a consumption model where you pay based on your usage. The move is seen as a way for Intel to cut down on the amount of SKUs it makes, therefore cutting costs, though I doubt any of those cost savings will ever reach consumers. Intel's already showing off a list of big name hardware vendors who will support on demand, with the likes of HPE, Lenovo, and even our beloved Supermicro. Interestingly and very noticeably missing from this list was Dell. I guess Dell don't play that game. I'm sure you're asking yourself, what does this have to do with Home Lab? And here's where I'm worried. See, my entire Home Lab is built on top of old enterprise servers. I use server hardware specifically because it's powerful and affordable when they reach their five to seven year depreciation. And because working with server gear like this directly relates to my professional career. And I feel like this is a Pandora's box potentially being opened here. What's next for Intel? CPUs with disabled cores you need to pay to enable? Is enablement tied to a company and transferable? Does unlocked mean forever? And at what point does everything we buy end up being turned into an as a service? Where instead of buying once and using forever, we end up buying it up front and then paying monthly for the privilege of using it. And if you don't think this is something that could eventually filter down to desktop CPUs, well, you are in for a history lesson, my friend. Intel's tried this before on desktop processors. Known as the Intel Upgrade Service, their first attempt was in September 2010 on the Intel Pentium G6951 CPU. For a mere $50, you could enable an additional megabyte of cache and hyperthreading to improve your CPU's performance. The program targeted low-end, budget consumers who Intel expected would be looking to squeeze just a little more out of their chips, which feels predatory to me. Of course, this was met with heavy criticism and complaints from the press and users alike because Intel was essentially nickel and diming people for the features already on their chips. The program extended into 2011 to three different Sandy Bridge CPUs before dying a merciful death. This brings me back to my opening point. If we don't start talking about this now and Intel deems this successful for their bottom line, then it's fair to expect AMD to adopt this as well. And in five to seven years after this has been enacted, it's going to mean buying server hardware for your home lab is going to be a mess. We already live in a CTO or configure to order world where servers are being parted down and you're being forced to buy components bare bones, which increases your investment. Imagine having to wade through a CTO world where the Sapphire Rapid Xeon CPUs you just bought for your dual socket host don't match because one came from a company that used the activation model and the other did not. Dell and Lenovo kind of pulled something like this with their vendor locking of AMD Epic CPUs to their chassis. This meant that if you bought a system with a locked CPU, that was it. You couldn't use that CPU with anything else. You want to use that CPU in another chassis? Too bad. These behaviors harm the server aftermarket and they hurt home labbers like us. Intel's on-demand is worse, in my opinion, because it stands to further divide and monetize not just the CPU, but the features on the CPU itself, and that is a step too far. Imagine buying a car and having to pay on-demand to use the radio. That's basically what we're talking about here. It just feels like such an evil money grab, and we need to tell Intel and the vendors supporting this that it's unacceptable. Okay. I'm calming down. I want to know what you think. Get down these comments and consider joining our Discord so we can talk more on this. Am I wrong? Do you even care? Are you an Intel apologist? Let's talk about it. Now that you finished this video and you've lit all of your torches and your pitchforks are ready, <laughs> go over here and check out this playlist of other great topics we've covered in the past. Thank you for watching.